This appears to be the main storeroom. It seems the villagers have been preparing for a protracted siege. Enemies can drop loot, but, um, well, they haven't. Well, I think enemies can drop loot. Yes, I do believe so. It's been too long since I played. A large silver key falls out of a Sahagen emerges from a hidden passage, demanding the key. You mustn't let the scrolls fall into the hands. The CR two, I, th I think, means like challenge rating two. So that's he's a challenge rating of two. Christ, they've really set up shop in here. Hmm. And thankfully they even brought some gubbins up here for me. Plus three resonating a 34 robe of Acid Guard 1. What the hell? Uh, these names are kind of ridiculous. Uh, passive, 34 equipment bonus to Sonic Spellpower. Passive, plus 3 armor bonus to armor class. Acid Guard 1. When you're hit or missed in combat, this item has a chance to deal 1d8 acid damage on hit. For those who don't get that, it means 1 8-sided dice. So if you roll an 8-sided dice, it comes up 8, they take 8 points of damage. Comes up 1, they take 1. Or anywhere in between. Uh, well, um, they take 1. And, you know, if it comes up 2, then it takes 2, you know, so on and so forth. Like, anywhere between 1 and 8. And it's only one dice. Say if there is Asagard plus three, say. I'm guessing here, but I imagine that'll be three D eight. So they can take anywhere from one to twenty four. Sorry, I had to work it out there in my head. Um so yeah. At least that's how I figure it works. Also I could re roll it there for one, but new. No. I can't. So yeah. There's also potion resist fire. Uh, gives an ally an enhancement against fire damage, reducing fire damage taken by 10. Damage reduction increases to 20 at caster level 7, and 30 at caster level 11. And the caster level of this is 5. Fantastic. Uh, thieve, uh, 50 Thieves Tools. It gives you a bonus to uh, lock picking and disabling uh, devices. But I'm not a rogue, so I can't use that. It's me. And despite the fantastic name of the... Um, Robe, I won't be using that either. A paladin, damn it. Not a, you know, classic well paladin. By classic well, I mean not as in, like, oh, that's the, you know, it's the, something's classic, it's a signature thing, or it's just how it's done. I mean, like, in vanilla well, paladins wore caught robes, because there wasn't in int gear in plate. So they had to run around wearing robes and whatnot. If they want to do raids and whatnot, because they had to be healers. Despite being a hybrid class, it wasn't, you know, you couldn't really uh, be a hybrid. It was very strange. You can also click here and see this. Uh, breaking, uh, doing enough, breaking enough shit gets you a XP bonus. Uh, killing enough monsters, saving enough traps, discovering enough secret doors gets you bonuses. Uh, not. Presum well, these two presumably, that presumably, um, and not retrying gets you a bonus. Well, no retries gets you a bonus, and no deaths get get you a bonus too. So it's all very handy. And I presume maybe if I get more, more, more breakables, that bonus might go up, or it might just stay at eight percent. I'm not sure. Well, that looks like the. Uh, wait, does this just lead to the same room? I went around because I figured this was the way. Uh, that was the door to the uh, scroll room. I actually didn't even notice that, uh, how that door looks. Hmm? So dramatic. There's that. There's that. We'll, we'll take some arrows. I can sell them, I guess. Oh, I can just hit E. That's fantastic. Just hit me. 
just hitting E instead of having to do analysis. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, well, I got it. Sorry. No, I... Yes, the uh, breakable thing has gone up. It's now a 10% thing, and it's called a Vandal bonus. Uh, and just killing 9 monsters would give me the aggression bonus. So I've gotten 492 XP. The door swings open. Ringing in this. A magical sphere. It appears that the floor in this room can be moved and rotated. And there, this is a different voice actor, I think. Different to the original guy. I think so, anyway. And this is interesting music. I don't remember this at all. To be honest, I don't remember most of the music, but this just really sticks out as different. This isn't too hard. Basically, you have to work this around to here. Well, actually, you have to work around to all four corners. That ain't hard in the slightest. Oh, sorry, wrong angle. Beautiful. Um, I have to do it there. I have to turn you. That's in. I'm surprised it doesn't require me to, you know, angle these so none's like flowing out. Also, what's even powering this? Magic? Huh. Alright. Well, I'm figuring anyway. It's, that seems pretty damn likely. Unless they've, you know, a secret, you know, a hidden fission reactor under the thing. It's a tavern. The tavern's powering this. You know, with it's weird fusion reactor for it. Uh, oven. The protective spell dissipates. All that remains now is to take and deliver the scroll. Beautiful. We're now done. We could hit finish, and there's a bit of a wind up, and you can teleport it out. But we may as well just walk out. Stepping out of the grotto, you find yourself in Kator's village. I already heard that before. I'll talk to you. Oi, you got the scroll? Let's see what it says. Uh, what it says, huh? What's this then? There are no pictures. Oh, never mind. I'll get to someone who knows how to read. Don't worry, I ain't gonna forget you. Here, take this for your trouble. Thank you, Ennis. Agile bet belt. Uh, plus one on reflex saves. Uh, girdle of Lesser Fortitude uh, gives you one to uh, one resistance bonus to your fortitude saves, or a rugged belt. Lesser False Life gives you five uh, bonus maximum health. Ah, no, I like the uh, rugged belt. Sure. Now I could talk to him again. And, uh, oh, actually, wait. Uh, with your help, I reckon Katoris can find, will finally be able to defeat the Devour Cult and their pet dragon. Hope this, uh, the scroll I found can really help against that dragon. S uh, Sigmund Barrison will find a way to use the dragon scroll you found. He's off in the Wavecrest Tavern if you want to have a chat with him. In the meantime, what can Linus do for you, great paladin? And we can start it again now, if we want to rerun that dun uh, dungeon. We, that way we can run on a higher difficulty and whatnot. Also, Druid is a new class. That was added in after I last stopped playing. So, no, no. For a moment, I thought her model looked nicer than the, everyone else's. Like, she's the like, most recent character made. She sounds swear that maybe that is the case. Yeah, I'm probably jumping at shadows. 
Oh, and here's the uh, warlock guy. It's probably the same character, you know, stuff. I'm probably just, you know, like I said, jumping in shadows. Uh, so, no, that's not at all creepy. We enter. For generations, they hate and protected the village from Sargon attacks. Uh, but now it looks like the Sargon have finally won. For all the Hatons are dead. Or so it's Coming seems. from deep in the crypt, you hear the strange and unsettling echoes that Kaya spoke of. And by the passage leading in, a grim faced man glares at you. I'm gonna stop for a sec. BRB. Hello, oh, well, folks, and I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to step away from the uh, keyboard for a moment. And I end up getting disconnected. Oh, I actually have an action point. Huh. Um. Enhancement. I think I might need to actually head to the uh, trainer down here. Oh, I was expecting the invisible wall. That's surprising. Vogel. Ugh, it hurts. It hurts. Services. Enha enhancements. Uh, I can now use a joke called using Witcher 2. I use in Witcher 2. Or I could hold off on it. Uh, I know, I feel like, you know, maybe I shouldn't, you know, um, uh, spoil my, uh, you know, like, re reusing jokes yet. But at the same time, I kind of want to make it. Um, what was it? No, uh, uh, there was a bit of gear I found in the Witcher 2 game called a Dwarf and Enhancement. It may be short, but it'll make sure you're stout. Uh, harbored by Light. Gain ten, uh, 10 to physical magical resistance rating. Gain one additional use of lay on hands. Addition when you are actively blocking with a shield. Means they attack you take 3d4 light damage. But yeah, if you're AFK for a bit, you, um, get disconnected. Um, your sense of demons now applies to all chaotic or evil outsiders. Yeah, there's, uh, for those who don't know, in D&D, uh, &D, there is a, um, an alignment, um, great. And, um, it's not just good versus evil, there is good, evil, then on a different axis, there is a lawful and chaotic. So you can have a lawful good person and they're all the, like, the law is the best way to achieve you know good. Well it, it differs from person to person obviously. Like they can still be lawful good but there's a different interpretation of it. Um, certainly you know lawful stupid is a thing. Um, I remember seeing a, an explanation for it before. Actually Harper Agent um, basically, some pa people when they're playing paladins would make really stupid. Um, uh, I don't really know enough on the topic, so I feel hesitant in even saying it because I've been said things before and been quite wrong, and I don't like being wrong. I'll, I'll say it on the off chance that I'm not bloody wrong. Um,. I can't actually get any of these because I haven't unlocked the Harper Tang yet. It does seem interesting. I'll take a look at all these in a moment, but basically the awful stupid thing. Maybe someone else can explain it better in the comments, but basically people playing paladins would make, you know, make bluntly stupid decisions trying to play awful good. Which is why people mockingly call them awful stupid. Or, no, was it awful stupid? Yes, awful stupid. Um, I did see one explanation for it online, why they were doing this. Certainly it's also possible they were completely misunderstanding what they are trying to do, but their, the exp explanation I saw online was that um, some uh, GMs are sticklers, or like they have a certain perce perception. Like, if you're a paladin and you don't say awful good in the older sets, if you say became neutral good, you've fallen. 
and you must go on a redemption quest. And so some GMs, to play silly beggars, would, you know, like someone may do something that fits within Lawful Good for them, but the GM decides they've now fallen, and just to fuck them over. So people would end up playing Awful Stupid and doing weird things in an attempt to not have to deal with that. Uh, it just sounds awkward and weird and annoying, but again, that's just what I remember hearing online. I don't, I've never actually sat down and played any D&D. I don't have any experience here to draw upon. I don't even know anyone personally who's had to deal with that kind of thing. So, like, the only d d story I end up hearing off people was them uh, talking about a... Um, they, like, they would be playing some campaign, and they went into this cave, and they were lucky they chose the uh, two people who could see in the dark to go in, because otherwise they would have been... Uh, Basically, the enemies inside the cave would have, you know, broken a dam um, to kill them, which is, you know, the logical first reaction. Oh, two people wandered into a cave. Let's destroy our own operations. But yeah, um, they did leave a, con- a fair bit of context, so maybe it wasn't as nonsensical as it sounded. But um, yeah, it was a, like roll versus death thing, and there's, I don't know, just. Ugh. Not a fan of that. Unlike here, where you can just resurrect if you die. As far as I know, in D and D, if you die, you either have to hope someone has, you know, the resurrection spell and materials, or you have to re-roll another character. There may be an NPC who can cover it, but that probably differs, from, you know, setting to setting, campaign to campaign, and where you are in the campaign. You know, maybe you're, you know, out of range of the local healer. So. Yeah, it's, um, I know, it just, I, I'm not used to playing games where, like, insta-kills, and, well, I'm used to playing, like, roguelikes and whatnot, but, <sighs> just feels like, just from what, of what I've ended up seeing of D&D games via, um, like, DDO or Neverwinter Nights, it ends up feeling like you're playing a normal RP, like, that kind of thing, just rubs me the wrong way. Um, because like it's like trying to play a normal RPG, say Witcher, but it's on roguelike mode. It just does not. It just seems weird to me, and just doesn't sit right. I'm not saying it's wrong or it's bad or it shouldn't be played that way. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just simply saying that it just seems very strange to me because I don't know. It just seems strangely dickish. But uh, like that's the only like friends, like, you know, that's the only story I can draw upon. I don't know of any other ones. So, maybe the, what I was saying on, about the other thing was completely off the mark. Maybe it wasn't. Um, if anyone can, you know, has any knowledge on that, you know, comment in the, leave his thing in the comments. And Wait, I just noticed this. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, uh, wait. Okay. Uh, for a moment, I miss saw how this was working. I thought, like, I just saw all this move. Uh, in reality, it's only scrolling one to the right. I thought it went over to a new page, and it was a whole new list of these. But no, it's it's just a new one. There's an empty slot over here. But this is a knife fighter, which I can on set if I want to. Um, to be honest, I don't see myself ever doing this. Because this requires you to. Um, we'll use daggers and shit. And I think you can throw them. And I'm not going towards a. That kind of build. What's this? Oh, okay. That just opens your character sheet to the enhancement tab. It's what you've gotten from here. So, uh, but yeah, that's. The awful stupid thing. Give me a second. I'm feeling like I'm forgetting to say something. Um, just make sure I don't go at it. Mark for AFK. Um, but yeah, let me start that point again. Um, I'm going to pause this one second. 
You know, I was thinking about it there for like the brief second I was taking a swig of cola.